All right, guys, so today I got something a little bit different. For those of you who are Fox Body fans, we are not going to be working on a Mustang today. We are going to work on a friend's Honda. We have a 2008 Honda Civic. The engine is hot, and I'm going to work on it anyway, my attempt at cooling it. So we have a AC compressor that is probably shot. Uh, if you want to know how to tell your AC compressor is bad, if you've got pressure in the system, and your compressor actually turns on, the clutch is good, but you don't get any cold air out of the system, and your pressure is still good, likely that your compressor is bad. Um, you could have a leak in the system too, but if you know that you don't have a leak, you can also test that stuff too. If you know you don't have any pressure in the system and you have pressurized it, there's a good chance that there is a leak in the system. But if everything else is good, AC compressor is probably the culprit. So we are going to be changing an AC compressor on this beast here. This is a uh, 1.8 liter and it is in need of one. I think it's got 180,000 miles on the car, so let's, uh, let's get to it here. I'm probably going to fast forward a lot of this video except for some of the, uh, the points, but we'll get a look at this AC compressor. You can see there's the alternator there. The AC compressor is directly below it. So what we're going to do is remove the serpentine belt Sorry, get you a better view here. We're gonna remove the serpentine belt, then we're gonna remove the alternator, and then the uh, AC compressor will come out this way after we take the lines off. Now, you're not supposed to vent this to atmosphere, so make sure you're doing this properly. Um, and also, uh, after you're done, you have to make sure that you get plenty of oil back in the system too for the new compressor. Um, and also, uh, good AC charge, you'll have to run it, cycle it, make sure you don't overcharge it, that whole shebang. So, uh, let's get to it. So the tensioner is adjusted by that guy there. Just push the push it this way or turn it, uh, I guess it would be counterclockwise. You turn that counterclockwise, then it loosens tension and you get the belt off. I'm gonna be able to remove these bolts here, I'll be able to pop the alternator out, then I'll be able to start on the rest of the fun. It is still 150 degrees or 40 degrees, sorry. Yeah, it's hot, I'm trying to work on this. Ugh! All right, alternator's out of the way, so you can see this piece has to come off right here. I 
I've already started on that. So this is the hydraulic tensioner. This is the bracket that houses it. There's one more bolt on the bottom side that'll be able to take the compressor off. Pull it out this way, replace it, call it good. That's the bracket. There you go, you can see the brackets removed from here. This is part of the tensioner. I might end up removing that Torx screw right there just to give myself a little bit more room to work. Um, but now is time for me to remove um, the bolts on the compressor, pull it up here, we'll evacuate the system, and then uh, put the new one on and call it good. All right, so there's a bunch of these clips that you've got to take off. These guys here. You gotta take a bunch of these off so that you can gain access here. And there are two bolts. I don't know if you can see where my wrench is, but there's two bolts. That guy right there. There's another one. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of right there. You gotta take those two off, and then the AC compressor will come off. Once you get the system evacuated, then you can remove the, the bolts all the way and pull your compressor out. Like so. Not with the old and in with the new. This one's all painted black and shiny. Make sure you look at the stickers that come from the manufacturer on these. This one says that it comes pre-charged with three ounces of oil, so you must add the recommended amount and type. Scan QR code for specific oil type and charge. little caution for you don't just use the bolts that come with this so that one was barely this is the one that came with it I was barely grabbing this is a stud and I've got to take it out of the old one
Almost done. That's the clip that came on this new alternator, and you can see that it's busted so it won't fit on this, so I'll have to zip tie it on there. No big deal. Normally it would clip on there like this, but you can see that that one is broken. Time to put the belt back on and then put the motor mount on. All right, so we're gonna push the tensioner forward to relieve the pressure and we're gonna pull the belt on. Let's see if we can get you guys a better view of all this debacle going on here. to make sure that you actually got the belt on all the pulleys. Let's see down there, we've got it on the AC compressor, got it on the water pump, got it on the idler pulley, and then it's back there as well. I don't know if you can see that, barely. Got it right there, right there. Good to go on that part. Motor mount to go back on. That's the motor mount. It mounts, it mounts the motor. <laughs> yeah, holds the motor in place up top. Right now, my jack stand is holding it in place. This is all aluminum. You don't want to cross thread it. So you want to be careful tightening these. This is your motor mount going into the block. So if you cross thread these, you're pretty much hosed. Don't be hosed. All right, give it a few ugga uggas. The last thing is, since this slid forward a little bit, you can see in there a little bit, that is the last one and you'll have to bring it forward so that it lines up. Pop goes the weasel. Seventeen's all around. Let's did, go. did you get a good enough shot? No, I'm not I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> I was trying. Sorry, gears. What's that piece for? This is the so this is the up and down motor mount. This piece makes sure that the engine stays here. This is the back to the front motor mount. Since this, uh, this front wheel drive, the way that it transfers the power can cause the engine to rock. So this is to minimize that. So you have to ugga uggas or whatever you call them? Okay, yeah, a few ugga duggas. Whatever they are. 
you use a power drill. Okay, okay. A few ugga duggas. Or you can call them ratatats, whatever. What's next? Connect the battery. Nice tip to remembering which cable to put on first is always be positive. Negative should come last. What happens if you do it the opposite way? Ah, you usually get a little spark. See, watch this. Hardly any spark at all. Negative first. When you're taking when you're taking the cables off, you always want to think negatively. When you're putting the battery back together, that means you're done. So think positive when you're done. Positive first. When you're starting the project, that's when you have to be negative because you got a lot of work in front of you. So. Or you have teenagers. And that's <laughs> negative, and so then you just want to disconnect their battery. That's possible too. And then it's positive when they earn their car back. So you can see, battery is connected. I know that it's a uh, terrible light out here. My apologies. It's it's uh, a little late here. We've got the alternator back uh, back in. I've got all those bolts snug down. The belts tensioned. Got everything tightened back up. Compressors back in there. Last thing to do is going to be to start the beast up and charge the system and see how she does. All right, so we're going to start the car, charge the system, and uh, let it do its thing. All right, so you're gonna connect to your low pressure line, which is the, the smaller one. It's the only one that this cap will fit onto. Check our system. You're going to set your, your temperature. So if we're 80 degrees, you want to be within there, typically right in the middle. And then we'll start shaking and charging. Nice shirt. Thanks. It's the ECU company that uh, I got the ECU from my Mustang from. Oh, no, I want cold AC. Uh, so it'll tell you what to do. This is with the engine off, open hood, locate the low pressure AC service port, the larger diameter to make. Place this over the cap. Turn the AC on high, start the car, set the fan to the highest setting temperature to the coldest, and make sure recirculation mode is selected. Attach the quick connect fitting. Read the pressure gauge. Low, system low and refrigerant. Continue on to step five. Step five, remove the spacer here, charge the system. So you shake the can well, screw can onto the gauge, connect the quick connect onto the low side port. Make sure to always hold the can upright, 12 o'clock position before starting the charge. Squeeze the trigger to charge the system while charging. AC Pro has a really good video on this too. <laughs> And then it says alternate between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock position. And then every 10 to 15 seconds, release the trigger. After the needle stabilizes, check the pressure readings on the gauge. Guarantee that you're, they don't have temp shirts. So. You can see it says engine management there. I only see management, but we don't know really what it says. Oh. Prove me wrong. Let's see if I can get you guys a shot. The compressor turned on. You can see down there it's the black one. So what you want to do when you're charging the system is watch your pressure, but initially your compressor won't turn on until you build pressure. So just remember that. I actually found that uh, one of the cans I had was dead and I wasn't getting a charge, but I thought I was. So here we go. You can see that we're in the green there. 
recycling. I'm going to see what the temp is. Let's go take a look. Let's see if I can bring the light in here. All right, so we're going to check the temp on the vent. Look at that, 49 degrees, 48 degrees. That's awesome. We're going to leave it like that, drive it around a little bit and see how she does. All right, we're in the car. We're going to take her for a little test spin. And we're going to see how it does. Let's see what the AC is like. And we're going to check the pressure when we get back and make sure that we got a good charge, make sure that everything's working good. We'll check the pressure in the vents as well. Make sure that it's all right. And so far, it feels great, gotta say. And so we're still right around 49, 50 degrees, which is great. I wanna make sure that we don't overfill the system. You can see. Get it ready to go right about 51. All right, we just got back from our drive. Air still feels good. Let's uh, see what we got coming out of the vents here. So all we want to do is check all our pressure. Make sure that everything looks good. Sorry guys, shaking the camera around a lot. All right, let's see what we got here. So we'll pop right back onto the low pressure. There at 30. So I'm going to give it just a little bit more. And we'll call it good. Call it good right there. Alright guys, for any of, you follow, any of you that follow my channel, I know that's a little different video working on a Honda instead of a instead of a Mustang, but if I'm not biased, I like all cars. If uh, you guys have any comments, suggestions, uh, put them below. Let me know what you think, and have a good one, guys. We'll see you on the next video.